Good morning everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Worksong as we share together in worship. Our opening song is song 565 in the Salvation Army songbook, All I Once Held Dear. And let's enjoy worship. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have found ourselves in your house this morning. We pray that as we worship that it will be acceptable to you. We pray wherever we find ourselves this morning that you will be there guiding, directing and filling us with your love. I just pray that you will be with every member of this call, that those who are not well will feel your presence just now and there will be healing. If there are those of our fellowship who are sitting on the fence. We pray that you will be with them, that there will be newness of life by your Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, just come, come and speak to them just now. I ask this in Jesus' name. Our next song is song 374, Jesus is Lord. And may we sing this song straight through and feel and know and tell and give our testimony. 
that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord, creation's voice proclaims it, all by his power each tree and flower planned and made. Jesus is Lord, the universe declares it, sun, moon and stars in heaven cry, Jesus is Lord. Our Bible reading from the New Testament is from Philippians, an important scripture for us, where we read imitating Christ's humility, imitating Christ's humility. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Holy Spirit, if any tenderness or compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in the Spirit and mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mind as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient, obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth 
and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. May the Lord bless us as we focus on that scripture. And now we're going to listen to the message from the band.
next song is song number 72 and some of you will remember this from singing company days perhaps you can't stop rain from falling down prevent the sun from shining you can't stop spring from coming in or winter from resigning or still the waters and the waves or stay the winds and keep the day from dawning you can't stop God from loving you his love is new each morning you can't stop God from loving you though you may disobey him you can't stop God from loving you however you betray him from love like this no power on earth the human heart can sever you can't stop God from loving you not God not now or ever let's enjoy this song Verses 35 to 39. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither the present nor the future, nor the powers, neither height nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. 
And now we're going to listen to the message from the songsters. song is song 456 to the tune of Repton, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, forgive our foolish ways.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, during this meeting we have focused on your love for us. So the promise of being disciplined, having brought us into a new life with Christ, Jesus promises to train us. Train us how to live. Jesus isn't looking simply for converts. He's looking for a disciple. Come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Mark chapter 1 and verse 17. There are few worthwhile things in life that we do, or at least we could do, at the first attempt, even such basic things as eating, speaking, writing, and they take a lot of attempts. Ask our children before we master them. And being a Christian is no different. We saw in our scriptures that God speaks to us. And in John 3 and verse 3, he expects us and guides us to be born again. But that call to discipleship, come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. Jesus called all sorts of people and he's calling all sorts of people to be his followers. And it's lovely to see you and hear you and talk to you. The fishermen, the tax collectors, the homemakers, the religious experts, the freedom fighters, the zealots, the soldiers, the prostitutes. There really is room for everyone. The call can be seen to be made of three elements. A call to decision. But it's the decision that you have to make. The choice is yours. A call to difference, a call to follow, a call to be in a certain place at a certain time, a change of lifestyle, a change of learning, a call to destiny. I will make you fishers of men. No matter how long or how short a time we have been a Christian, Jesus still brings these three challenges. Counting the cost. Changing the loyalty. Being ready to finish what we start and considering your cost and being ready to make the sacrifice and today is the beginning of our self-denial appeal in the Salvation Army and just now just now we will see a video a DVD of our first week concerning self-denial. But remember, we are seeking to become more like Jesus. Hello and welcome to the first of our films for this year's Self-Denial Appeal. For this year's Self-Denial Appeal, we're looking at how the Salvation Army around the world is caring for creation and responding to climate change. More of that in a minute. But first, let's look at last year's appeal. 
If you saw the films last year, you'll remember that Captain Ben Cottrell interviewed people working in Mali and Burkina Faso, Pakistan, Bangladesh and the Philippines. Despite all the difficulties we all face during 2021, you gave so generously once again. Thank you so much. Your self-denial money is already being put to good use. If you're new to the Salvation Army, you may be wondering what the self-denial appeal is about. The idea is you go without something for a week or even a month, that's the self-denial bit, and the money you save or the money you decide to give supports the Salvation Army's work around the world. And it's not just something we do here in the UK. Nearly every Salvation Army Corps in the world gets involved. So wherever you are, you are joining with Salvationists who are doing the same thing. The money is redistributed by international headquarters to the places that need it most. Some of the self-denial money you raised goes to our mission partners, but quite a lot goes to other mission support work all over the globe. It funds the essential background things so that Salvation Army staff and volunteers can get on and do what they're good at. Today I've escaped the city to the beautiful Essex coast. I'm at Hadley Farm. Bought by the Salvation Army over 130 years ago as the main site for a pioneering social programme and it's a good place to think about caring for creation. These days they run a whole range of fantastic projects here including a training centre for adults with additional support needs, a rare breed centre and tea rooms as well as a working farm. Well worth a visit if you get the chance. In William Booth's day, people from the city slums had the chance to find new skills and employment away from the desperate poverty of the East End. The work here also represented a commitment to sustaining the earth and stewardship of the environment. William Booth once said, God didn't put Adam and Eve into a factory, he put them into a garden. At the time Hadley Farm was being developed, the Salvation Army was also setting up waste paper depots across the country to recycle paper, providing employment for people who'd been homeless and destitute, and raising charitable funds for the Salvation Army's social work. So, while caring for our environment is nothing new, fast forward 130 years and we're all much more aware of the need to look after our planet. In fact, caring for creation is one of the mission priorities of the Salvation Army in the UK and Ireland. That means considering the environmental impact of all our work and helping change attitudes so we all use our planet more responsibly. The effects of climate change are being felt worldwide. In our support for the Salvation Army around the world, we are helping people increase resilience to these effects and overcome food insecurity. We're also providing immediate support and relief to people affected by extreme weather events like storms and floods. Last year's films showed us that around the world, the coronavirus pandemic was an added challenge alongside hurricanes, tornadoes, blizzards and droughts. And the people who are hardest hit are those who are already facing poverty. So for the next four weeks, I'll be talking to people from around the Salvation Army world, asking them about what's happening where they are. I'll be talking to them about caring for creation and the impact of climate change. I'll be talking to Victor Mondal in Bangladesh. He's worked for the Salvation Army for over 40 years. I'll be talking to Colonel Yusak Tampi, the territorial commander in Indonesia, a country which has had its fair share of natural disasters. I'll be talking to Major Lorraine Medina in Costa Rica. Costa Rica is a division of the Latin America North Territory. But next week, I'll be talking to Georgia Bondo in Kenya. He's a project manager working on water, sanitation and hygiene, as well as food security projects across the country. I look forward to seeing you then. I hope you benefited from seeing that video and will enjoy giving in our self-denial altruism later on in the month. So our song 
259. In the love of Jesus, there is all I need. Sing through these words carefully and may the Lord bless you today.
And we're now completing our meeting. I trust the Lord has spoken to you as he has me. And our closing song is Psalm 74. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Bringing back Philippians 2, as we read earlier. Perhaps some of you sang this song at school. May you be blessed as we sing it now. is not above his teacher nor a servant above his master it is enough for the student to be like his teacher and the servant to be like his master heavenly father teach us teach us how to serve you better today and always <laughs>